district, we as on my leaders in before we came out of the office today, I asked him, I said, have you, do you know why Chicago O'Hara Airport is named O'Hara Airport? And they looked at me and said, Pastor, I don't know if we can. I said on February the 20th, 1942, there was a man who was on the Lexington which was an aircraft carrier in World War II. His name was Butch O'Hara. Butch O'Hara was given a mission by his captain and they flew out in a squadron off the deck of that ship that day. En route to their journey, Butch O'Hara realized he ain't got enough gas to make it full round to do what he was supposed to do and come back safely to the ship. He radioed his quadrant leader and he told him, he said, immediately you are to leave us and go back to the ship. When he left the squadron, he didn't want to. On his way back to his fleet, he seen something he never saw. While all the planes were on a mission going somewhere else, Butch O'Hara met a squadron of Japanese fighters who have snuck into the fleet to destroy him. He can't go back and get his squadron and he can't even contact his fleet. So the story said that Butch O'Hara made a decision. He said, I'm gonna fly right in the middle of them Japanese warriors, them fighters. I'm probably gonna die today, but I'm gonna kill as many as I can. The story says that he flew in the middle of that squadron of Japanese pilots. Confused to the hilt. Here come one guy in a plane, 50 cows blazing. Shot down five of those enemy aircraft. After his ammo was spent, tried to knock the wings off the rest of the planes with his own plane. They got so scared that one guy from the Navy would act like this. They turned and fled the whole squadron of Japanese fighters. He landed that plane on the deck of the Lexington. For the first time, they gave a Navy serviceman the Congressional Medal of Honor, and he got shot down a year later in a dogfight over the South Pacific. But they remember him today for his courage. And O'Hara Airport in Chicago is named after his bravery. Did you know that? No. You do now. So when you fly in O'Hara, you realize there was a man one day who made a decision. You won't take my freedom without a fight. Hallelujah to God. And I'm telling you, I'm glad for men who still have that kind of courage in our country to stand against innumerable odds at times that go out and risk their lives every day so that your freedom to be able to come home at night to a home, children, wife, to celebrate that is intact. And I'm telling you, I can't say thank you enough. The other day, I, not long ago, I was in the airport and two people come by me that normally I don't have a, as far as being able to conversate with them, I, I don't. And that's soldiers and I'm military. I see them at times. They probably think I'm crazy, but you know, I listen to the things on TV where they say, when you see a military person in active duty, whatever you need to think them, well, I'm just crazy enough to believe that that's what you need to do. Mm -hmm. So there's times I'm in airports, whatever, and I'll salute them and say, thank you for your service to the people who read me. They got lost my mind. But I'm like, I'm serious. I thank you for your service to our country. And I remember sometime back I was flying out of somewhere and I see two people and I said, you know, God, I'm going to speak to them two people today. Out of everybody in this airport, I'm going to speak to them two people. One of them was a sergeant in the U.S. Army and the other was a rabbi from Jerusalem. <laughs> and I remember I walked up to that sergeant and I said, thank you for your service to our country. I'm Pastor Napier. I was born and raised in South Carolina. I've never been in the military. I'm in the Army, but the Army of the Lord. 
And I said, I thank you for your service and your sacrifices to our country. And he saluted me. And at 10 foot down, I walked by that rabbi. I said, Shalom, rabbi. He said, he jumped back, looked at me, and he said, Shalom, brother. <laughs> I thought, you know, we have a lot of diversity in our country. There's one thing about it. We still have a God that's over this country that we still recognize as the God. Not a God, but the God. Amen. Let me tell you right now, there are other countries that acknowledge other gods. And sadly enough, at times, those gods have made their way into this country. And people have tried to put those gods beside our God. And let me tell you, they'll be, they, he'll have no other gods before him. That's in the commandment. Somebody say amen. amen. Matter of fact, time won't allow me to tell it, but I will tell this part of it. When the Philistines stole the Ark of the Covenant during the during the uh, during the time of Eli, when it fell prey, they had fell into sin, and sin had brought about the captivity of the children of Israel. They lost the Ark of the Covenant. First time in history that the Ark of the Covenant left Jerusalem or Israel. During that trip, they took the Philistines, took the Ark of the Covenant back with them and placed it, the Bible says, in the temple of their god, Dagon. When they placed the Ark of the Covenant in that temple with that pagan god, the next morning they came in there and that god was on his face. That statue was down on his face before the Ark of the Covenant. Well, that wasn't good enough. They figured, well, somebody must have kicked him over and he had tipped over or something had happened. And, hey, when God says, yeah, we know other gods before me, he meant whether they're stone, whether they're wood, it doesn't matter. No other God can stand before our God. Can I get an amen? So then they brought, they cut, they stood him back up. They thought everything's fine. The next morning they come back in and there he's down again. But now he's broken into pieces. The, the idol has actually broken into pieces. It was like God said, now I body slammed him yesterday, but I'm really going to take him out today. And when they come in, that devil had done to, been disintegrated and God was on his throne. Let me tell you something. I just want to tell you right now, that's been 4,000 years or 3,500 years ago since that event I just told you took place. Has God changed? Not one bit has God changed. And he'll have no other gods before him. Amen. And I'll tell him every day, God, our, our government may be trying to oust you and they don't want you in, a, in, in the White House. Our colleges may not allow us to pray like we like we like to and have we and how we used to pray in the past and the commitments and the and the services and, and graduations. But let me tell you, every day I say, God, this is still one country under one God. Hallelujah. And I still love you. And I, I'm telling you, I'm an American to the bone. I love America and all these people that don't like America get you a ticket fly out of this country go find you somewhere else to live is that alright I mean I, I, I'm serious I'm so tired of people hating on America I'm like look at here I can go down to the store and buy bread and milk and I, I got the liberty and the freedom to work and to, 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 to celebrate my life here and I'm telling you I told a man not long ago, I said, you know how you can tell a country is really free and it's really a good country? He said, how is that? I said, hey, how many, I said, when, you, when they show you the, the uh, Rio Grande in Mexico, I said, how many of the Mexicans are swimming from America back to Mexico? I said, how many people are trying to die to get in Saudi Arabia and Libya and Turkey? They ain't none of them. They're all trying to get out of there because they're in, they're in bondage and they're, there's freedom here. Let me tell you, you can tell how good a country's going by how many people are trying to get in it. Somebody say amen. And I'm telling you right now, I love America. And everybody that is opposed to what we stand for, go live in Saudi Arabia for a while. If you keep your head... More power too. But I'm glad I live in America. How about you? Yeah. Tell I'm stirred up, can't you? Wow. My God, somebody needs to say it. I said somebody needs to say it. Yeah. I'm telling you, I've never met so many scared preachers in my life. 
Well, we might get sued. Well, we might go to hell if we don't tell it to. Come on now. Can, can I just preach a little while? Well, I ain't going to talk about politics. Well, why not? Well, then we get into all what we what we believe. Let me tell you right now, God's in the middle. We got politics because of God. Because of the commandments. We have a law. We have that law because of God. And, 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 and we, we, we shouldn't be ashamed or, or have to take a back seat when we're sitting somewhere and somebody disagrees with our views. We ought to have enough gumption about us to say, wait a minute here, hold up a minute. The reason I believe that ain't just because it's in the Constitution. I'm glad for that, but it's in the Word of God too. And, and, and I'm an American and I still believe that the, this America was born out of the desire to be free from the oppression of terror where we can pray and exercise our right to worship God. Somebody say amen. I feel like joining the service right now. My to God, if the recruiter come in here, they, I'd say, can you take a 49-year-old? Let me tell you, I told my wife not long ago, she said, shut up, Philip. Don't even go there. Don't even go there. I'm telling you, I don't know. I, I, I thought one time, I said, God, I missed part of my whole life because I'd have enjoyed military. I love camaraderie. I, I'm I'm, you know what I'm saying? I love guns in hell. I mean, give me a gun. I'm happy as a lot. Hey, give me two. It's even better. I mean, hey, hey. Make my day. So I, I, I'm like, you know, we, 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 we sadly pass by in our life and we never give credit to the men and women that, 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 have, been, that have given their life. And I, I'm telling you, I, I love our country. And I keep saying that over and over and over and over again. But let me tell you something. I want to share some things with you today. Can I share just a few things with you? Today we honor, we honor the men and women of the armed forces of the United States who have paid the ultimate sacrifice, who have given their own lives in defense of this great nation of ours to preserve the freedoms that everyone in this room holds so very dearly. Amen? Amen. Jesus Christ himself my and, and, and the beloved uh, John the Apostle talked about how that there was no greater love that no one could demonstrate. Jesus said it than for a man to lay down his life for his friends. The ultimate gift of life is death. I mean, the, think about it. The ultimate gift of a human life is the death of another human life. In order for people to live, there has to be people at times die. Hey, make no mistake about it. There's some religions who hide behind whatever their theology, who won't join the military and won't be involved in government. Boy, they don't mind telling you how they believe it should be run. Somebody say amen. Hey, I say put your money where your mouth is. My thing is, you know, we, 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 we hide behind that. But the Word of God says there's a time for peace, but bless God, there's a time for war. There's a, there's a, time, there's a time for it. There's a time for gathering in stones. There's a time for casting stones away. There's a time for planting. There's a time for harvest. Everything there is, there's a time for it. And I really believe, I'm not saying God institutes war. There's madmen in our world. We, we can thank for that. But that never did God ever tell us we need to back down and sit down and say, you know, we're going to let madmen kill all, you know, uh, uh, all the peoples of the world. Whatever group they want to pick out, they kill them. No, I'm glad America still got enough backbone to say, huh, uh, we're going to join forces with some people and we're going to make sure that the Taliban and, and, the, and the, the radical Muslim groups is trying to destroy our freedom. Hey, I don't care what the media says. It ain't about, it's not about just America and, and, and what we believe and the Muslim world. Make no mistake about it. They don't like Jehovah God. They don't like Christianity. They hate our freedom. They hate our Bible. They hate our worship. But let me tell you right now, I heard a, I heard a story the other day that 
about the Middle East and Sudan and it said that the Taliban's went on red alert because a lot of their soldiers by the hundreds are becoming Christians. They said there's a revival broke out over there in the Sudan. And they said the soldiers that have been killing Christians now have changed their mind. They've laid the arms down and by the hundreds they're walking away from the armies of that country and they say no way. Jesus Christ is real. He's alive. Hey, let me tell you. Jesus said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. I feel like preaching this morning. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Let me tell you right now. God can invade an army. Hallelujah. Without firing a shot. Turn the hearts of them men back to him or to him for the first time. Lay down their arms and realize there's a better way to live. Hallelujah. Than the way we're living. Let me tell you. When diplomacy don't work and politics is failed us, you can always count on the unseen hand of an almighty God to find its way somewhere in the barracks and the countries and the prisons of our world. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh my. The declaration, the preamble to the declaration of independence. I'm going to give you all some history this morning. The unanimous declaration of the 13 United States, the, the, of the 13 United States of America says in part, of the 13 colonies, this is what it says. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the bit of political bands with that which have connected them with, with one another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and the laws of, nat of nature's God, of, of God's entitled them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. Are y'all with me? Say amen. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. They are endowed by their creator with certain alienable rights. They among these are life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. I wish somebody could hear that. Hallelujah. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers for the, from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government. I feel like going to Washington. It's our right when it's failing to reinstitute new government by the sovereignty of God himself and that that we built ourselves on here in America. Come on now, amen. Hmm. It is the right of the people to alter, let me say it again, or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundations on such principles and organizing its power in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. We can change some things, they're saying. When it starts going wrong, we have the right to change. Thing. Hmm. We, the people of the United States of America, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings, I like that, the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity to ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. Our nation, my brothers and sisters, this morning has been and is a nation of laws. Would you agree? Say amen. amen. Our founding fathers held this nation to be a nation under the laws of Almighty God Himself. And the laws of nature, the principles found in the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States of America have made this nation the greatest nation ever to be formed on the face of the earth. Hallelujah. In an era of those principles, Almighty God has blessed this nation like no other nation. And to Him we give the honor and the praise and the glory to this morning. On this day, we are troubled by the lack of respect that is being shown to Almighty God. 
by the lack of respect that is being shown to the laws that Almighty God has given us. God, have mercy. I feel like preaching a little while. By the lack of respect that is being shown to our departed servicemen and women, the Mojave Desert War Memorial Cross, you remember some time back, built and dedicated in 1934. My God, it was destroyed and removed by persons or persons unknown that don't even know. High school students in California were ordered to remove their t-shirts after displaying the American flag and told them to turn them inside out because they may offend Latino students who were celebrating Cinco de Mayo and displaying, Amer and displaying Mexican flags. The American flag this symbolizes our hopes and all of our aspirations. I need some help in here today. It symbolizes our struggles and our sacrifices. It symbolizes our joys, but my God, our achievements also. This nation is not Mexico. It is the United States of America, and the American flag is our flag. Now, I don't, I'm not a hater. I'm just telling you I'm glad I'm who I am. Hallelujah to God. Mm -mm -mm. And we should be able to display that flag whenever and wherever we desire. Because we believe in freedom. We allow a Latino citizen to celebrate Cinco de Mayo. You can celebrate it and display the Mexican flag. However, that does not give anyone the right to demand that we hide ours, though, in some kind of secure and secluded area. Our American servicemen and service women are special people. Hallelujah. Some of them fought and died for this great nation despite the fact that they were denied the very freedoms that they fought so hard to preserve. The Tea Party movement, you heard of it? Yeah, here it is. Was started because this government is no longer governing with the consistent or consent of the government. This administration has set about for the determination to transform America into a nation that is unrecognizable from that which our founding fathers created. Oh my God. One nation under God, under God, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. They have sought with a determination to undermine the Constitution of the United States of America. The American people are fed up with the assault upon their freedoms. I don't know about you, but I'm fed up with it. I've had enough of it. I'm an American. I have freedoms. I have rights. And I don't have to apologize for any of that. How about you? Say amen. amen. Hmm. They have risen up in protest to speak against the outrages that have been committed by the administration that's currently there and Congress. Mm -mm. Boy, if this goes YouTube, I might have a visit from the FBI. In nonviolent demonstrations, they have spoken out against the direction that this nation is taking. And they have called upon the people to turn the people out of office who are trying to destroy this very nation as we know it today. To destroy free enterprise, to destroy free speech. I won't be able to preach no more if they do that. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen again. Amen. Uh, to de destroy free speech, to destroy the very principles and the men and the women we honor today and what they died for. Let me tell you right now. I hunt and I fish and I'm a second amendment my God believer. I believe in the right to keep and bear arms. Are y'all with me? Say amen. Now look, they might not believe that in the city. I was born different. I was raised different. But where I come from, a man ought to have two things. A pickup truck and a gun of some kind. Somebody say amen. Somebody said, my God, I feel like I'm better. Politician place. We're hearing some speech from somebody who's fixing to be elected. Look at here, I ain't looking to be elected. I don't, I don't want no office. Matter of fact, Ronnie holds an office, and I pray for him every day because that job he's got is tough as it can be. I mean, they got a zero painted on him so big, they all after him, shooting at him. But I'm glad for men like Ronnie Young. Let me just go ahead and say this. I'm glad for men like Ronnie Young and the county council that we can just, that, that we can still depend on. That man that still fear God, come to church, have a Bible, who still pray, believe God. My God, not only that, but they believe in the Holy Ghost. They believe that God can only change things. And we got the chairman of the county council who 
the rest of us trying to ouch and get out of there so that they can the own, fulfill their own mandate. But I can say this. He's been a part of my life since I can't even remember when. I mean, him and my sister's been married since 1941. No, I'm picking. I mean, but, but it's been a long time and I was a little boy. But I can tell you this. I say this behind his back and I say this to his face. Everywhere you go, somebody will tell you, that man helped me. When he worked at Granville Company, he tried to get them everything they could. I mean, he passed out. Then they said, oh, God, I'm going to get in trouble. Then they said one time that all them hams you passing out was for political purposes to get you reelected. They didn't know he just trying to feed some full pole, full pole down in Graniteville and trying to get them some, some hams at Christmas time and Thanksgiving. And somebody wanted to take that and use it as some kind of political, uh, personal uh, thing that he was trying to do. But I'm glad for men like Ronnie Young. Can you say amen? I'm glad. Ronnie, wave your hands at me. I'm glad for men like that who still believe that God is the center of this nation. When he makes decisions, they pray about it. He's on the news. He's in the newspaper. But every time I see it, I pray for him. I say, God, give him the strength they need. Let him be like old Butch O'Hara. When they start coming down, my God, get the guns ablaze and walk up in there and make decisions and say that God be the glory. Somebody praise the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God for men like that. That's my brother, Mike. I ain't gonna say nothing bad about him. <laughs> if he wasn't, I still would. That's right. Just because I know what he does and I know. Yeah. Men like Jimmy Wiles. You knew I was coming for you, didn't you? <laughs> Men like Brother Jimmy Wiles, who serves in Richmond County, gets out on the street, puts his life in danger every day. Sister Marsha worries about that. She probably cringes every time the phone rings. Is it something that's happened? Is Jimmy all right? To live in that fear and that dread. Only for a man to make, I don't know what you make, but I bet it ain't no quarter million dollars a year. Am I right? You smile and you wish you would, wouldn't you? Hey, if I had to wait to give it to you, I'd say that's your salary for the next 10 years. Now vote for me, hallelujah. <laughs> but they put their life on the line every day. And they walk out in the streets where there's crack addicts and drug addicts and pimps and people who's pushing drugs. And they put their life for a very little bit of money so that our freedoms like this right here, so that churches are not vandalized, where so that neighborhoods are not completely taken over by, by, by the drug nation. Are y'all with me? Say amen. I'm telling you, men like that in a church are invaluable. Men like that in a community are invaluable. Give it up for Jimmy Wiles right now. I love you, brother. Man told me, asked me the other day, said, Preacher, what you think about all these killings in the theaters and places of business where people are coming in? He said, Don't you think sooner or later they're going to visit churches and come in and try to kill us? I said, That's fine. I said, But I'm going to put some of my community in the old notice. Let me tell you right now. And some of y'all going to think, y'all going to say, Oh my God, the preacher is off the deep end. He's been listening to too many radical Americans. I mean, he, he's got that Second Amendment thing going way too far with that thing. But let me tell you, they ain't coming in here killing our children. Are you hearing me? They ain't going to do it. They ain't going to do it if I have to arm every man in this room. They ain't going to do it. And when somebody walks in here and says, hey, we just going to take advantage of these little simple, humble Christians, they going to find out we took 45, 49. Some of them got shotguns in the truck. Are you hearing me? I'm just telling you right now. You may say, well, my God, that, that, that's violence. Now, let me tell you right now. The kingdom of God suffered violence, but the violent take it by force. Let me tell you. You may come in, but you won't leave that way. <laughs> Hallelujah. That ain't how, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, that ain't how we roll around here. Amen. I'm just telling you, that ain't how we roll. And some people get mad and they say, oh, we should, we should just love and be at peace. Let me tell you right now, when that man was shooting them people up yonder in that theater, wasn't nobody jumping up and saying, let me preach a message about love, man. Let me tell you what he need. Quit. Let me tell you, I'm tired of people getting murdered. I'm tired of our loved ones being beat with baseball bats over on the park bench in Augusta. Somebody say amen. I'm telling you, we need to stand up and say, hold on a minute. I'm telling you, I, I told my wife, I said, but <laughs> she's like, don't do it, Philip, don't do it. I thought to myself, if a man come at me and I didn't have nothing, I'd look at me and I said, let me tell you something, son. 
You can hit me if you want to, but the Holy Ghost will kill you dead at 4 o'clock right here. Because I'm the anointed of God. I'm telling you right now, I belong to Jesus, and that don't mean, that don't mean that, may not mean nothing to the world, but it does to God. You can touch me if you want to, but I guarantee you, in a few, few days from now, they'll put you in the ground, and they won't, matter of fact, God will put you there, and you won't, they won't even know where to find you. <laughs> hey, we need not back down for people. I'm tired of it. How about you? I said, how about you? And you know who's behind all of it? Booger D. Devil himself. I'm talking about the capital. I'm talking about the capital offender himself. He's behind all the violence, behind all the drugs. And while we sit in our little closet, you know, doing this and doing that, he's running rampant. Somebody ought to stand up in your school and say, listen here, you ain't bringing drugs in here in the name of Jesus. You ain't bringing no drugs in here. You can do whatever you want to do, but that's all right. They said, well, you better not call the law because they'll target you then. Hey, God created law for the lawless, not for the folks who's carrying out the law. Somebody say amen. God, I ain't preached like this in a long time. I mean, the law ain't for the people that obey the law. It's for the lawless. But how many felt like it's been crammed down your throat? I'm doing what's right, but they want to out me. I got rights. Hallelujah. Hmm. We need to show respect to God. Amen. To the service men who died. Our American service men and service women are special people. Amen. I guarantee you. That tea party I'm talking about. Hmm. The more I listen to them, I better quit. Fox News personality, maybe you've heard of this guy. I don't agree with everything he says. But I do think at times we need some kind of voice Amen. to share our views. Conservative radio, broadcast, television host, political commentator, author, entrepreneur, you might know him, Glenn Beck. He was born the same year I was born, 1964. He outlined nine principles, nine principles that we should believe in today in America. Would you like to know? Yeah. Glad you asked. Number one, America's a good place. It ain't a perfect place, but it's a good place. Yeah. Number one. I like it. Yeah. It ain't perfect, but I like living here. Right. How about you? Yeah. Number two, believe in God, make him the center of your life. Yeah. That's Glenn Beck, man. That ain't a preacher. That's Glenn Beck. Number three, try to be a better, more honest person than you were yesterday. He needs to be a preacher. Number four, the family is sacred. The husband and the wife are the ultimate authority. Come on now, amen. Number five, if we break the law, we must pay the penalty. Justice is blind and no one is above it. No one is above it. Number six, we have a right to life, liberty, and the and the pursuit of happiness, and not a guarantee of equal results. That's not a guarantee of equal results. Oh, I'm gonna get in trouble. Some folks don't hit a lick at us. Oh my God. The Bible said if you don't work, you don't eat. Uh, no, your Bible says you don't work, you don't eat. I can't believe how many people in America don't hit a, can I say hit a lick of a snake? They, they won't hit a lick of a snake. And they make more every week than the man and the woman going to the factory working 40, 50 hours a week. And they tell us our system is not broke. You remember the old Chinese proverb. 
you know, you give a man a fish, two or three hours later, he'll be hungry again. But if you teach a man how to fish, he'll never be hungry again. My brother Bryson, where are you at? I tried to teach that little brother how to fish the other day. Teach him how to fish. He'll always be a fisherman. He'll, he'll know how to fish. He'll know how to provide for himself. That's the thing. Folks have got to provide for themselves. There is a thing in this country called honest work, ethics. You go to work, you come home. You pay your bills. You live right. You live ethical. You have some convictions about your life. Am I preaching all right this morning? I know some of y'all might say, that is like, unlike Pastor Phil. But it's high time that somebody tell somebody in the church that, listen, it ain't all right to lay up in your house all day long and let the government and the people that work hard pay your bills. Help me, somebody. Hey, and we, we make excuses for not telling that real well. I ain't making no excuses. Let me tell you, I was raised in a generation where there wasn't no such thing as dead beat. And if it was, you wouldn't live too much long after that. Somebody finds you and stir you up real good. Can I say that? You'd be working for long. But we live in that country where, you know, it, it give me what I deserve. Give it to me. I didn't work for it, but give it to me. Hmm. My, 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 my. We have a right to life and liberty in pursuit of happiness. We must work hard for what we have and we'll share it with whomever we want to and government cannot force us where and when to be charitable. You can't force me where to give it. I want to, I work hard and I want to give away what I've got. That is my choice. Somebody say amen. amen. God has given me the right to be charitable in the word of God throughout the law. He tells the Israelites, when you glean the field, don't glean it all. Leave some for the strangers and the sojourners so that when they come behind you, didn't mean they were part of you, but they needed to eat too. Somebody say amen. amen. You share with who you you can share with God give us those in that that word in his word he give us that mm, 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 mm. he give us that Jesus Christ paid the ultimate sacrifice his very own life my God so that we might be redeemed. Amen. That we might be restored in right relationship with Almighty God. Amen. So that we might have eternal life. For that, we thank you. There is a, a few more thoughts I wish to share with you and I'll be very brief going off the page now. There are some thoughts concerning when you talk about Memorial Day, I think of soldiers who fought. There's not a person in this room, you may have never been in the military physically. But spiritually this morning, there's soldiers all over this room. If you are a born again believer, whether you wanted to or not, you enlisted to do battle. Come on now, amen. And if you don't think you ain't in a war, you need to get your hand, head out of the sand and realize the devil is trying to kill, steal, and destroy everything you've got. Somebody say amen. amen. So today I'm talking to some soldiers. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm a soldier. I may not look like one right now, but my God, I'm a soldier. I may not be a threat to society, but I want to be a threat to hell and everything that it, it represents. I want Satan to get up every morning. When he gets up and I get up, I want him to go on red alert. Now I'm awake. Hallelujah. Philip appears up. My God, let's do something to trip him up and get him sidetracked so that he don't pray and he don't witness and he don't tell what he's been telling. Because if he keeps doing that, we're going to lose some folk. We're soldiers. Hey, the, the 
the apostle Paul wrote to a young timid preacher by the name of Timothy. In 2 Timothy, he writes these words to him. He, say, he says, endure hardness as a good soldier. Endure hardness. See, that word don't reflect a lot of views of Christianity. We are living, I, I'm, I don't know, this must be the day that I get in trouble for a lot of things. I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm writing more with my, I'm writing a big check with my mouth today. I hope I can catch it later. We live in a time where radical grace is being preached. With no, no, when I mean radical grace, it's that whatever you've done is all right. And whatever you're doing is all right. God just forgets about it and it's all over. Wrong. Somebody say amen. amen. They are consequences to your actions. Amen. They are consequences to your sins. And when you sin, sin brings about death in our lives. Say amen, somebody. Can I, I mean, do I have time to tell you of all the men and women in the Word of God just in there alone, not even in our time, but in the Word of God who lived and tried to live above sin and tried that and seen the results and the repercussions of living a life that was not pleasing to God. One of them, David, hey, we all know about him and Bathsheba, should have been out in the war, should have been fighting, but he was looking. when you need to be in one place but you are at another place the worst thing you can be is at the wrong place at the right time of your life God have mercy that's a good message I'm telling you you need to be doing what God called you to do when he called you to do it if you need to be on the battlefield don't be in the house in a picnic you need to be at the Bible says when the kings at the time of the year when kings go out to war David was on top of his roof that was a wrong decision. If he'd have been on the battlefield, then get this, he was at more risk of dying being on top of his house than he was fighting in the war with the Philistines. And guess what? He had more damage done to him on top of his house drinking a cup of juice than he did while he was out there on the battlefield. The, the, the Philistines could not inflict the damage upon him that was inflicted on him through sin of his own life. But y'all hearing what I'm trying to say? And then when David committed it, my God, he came down. Not only did he do that, but he sent Uriah, her husband, to the front line where he should have been. And they killed him there. And Joab made sure that Uriah, Bathsheba's husband, died because of David's command. So man has committed adultery and murder. Oh, your life looks pretty good, don't you? Hallelujah. Hey, it ain't too bad. Let me tell you, when God will still deal with you knowing that you manipulated people's lives and murdered them to do what you wanted to do and still deal with you, then you serve a merciful, merciful, merciful God. Hear me now. But oh, when the time came, Nathan walked in the door of the prophet. Hey, David, let me tell you a little story, son. There's a man that had a hundred, hundred sheep, and there's one man that had one little lamb. And the man that had a hundred came and stole the little sheep or the little lamb from the man that only had one. What do you think? He said, find that man right now, find him and bring him to me. He said, you're the man. <laughs> oh, Kodak moment. I mean, if you could have seen his face when that man of God told him that, it all rushed back into reality. I been a fool. I made some mistakes. I brought God's name into the, to the mix of this thing. You know what I say? I told a man not long ago, he said, I just don't know if I can live right. I, I, I'm trying to do right and, and I appreciate that and I'm trying, but I can't leave this alone and I can't leave that alone. I said, listen here, if you can't leave that alone, leave one thing alone. Leave God alone. But don't drag God through your sin and through your mess and bring a reproach against the name of Jesus. If you're going to be an alcoholic, be one. But don't come up in here and shout all over the building and leave here and drink. Somebody, that preacher better than you shout. I mean, hey, if you're going to be a backbiter, be a backbiter. But don't serve on the My God Evangelism board and be a backbiter. I mean, get out of the thing. If you're going to be a sinner, be one. But if you're going to be a child of God, be that. Hallelujah. And walk the way you should. Is this okay? I'm almost done, I promise. 
David was faced with the consequences of his sin. Guess what happened? Nathan said, David, you shall not die. You've obtained mercy from God. You won't die. Now, one of the radical grace preachers would have been there. They just said, it's all right now, son. All you did is wiped out clean slate. Ain't no such thing as a clean slate. He's a clean soul. Right. But there ain't no one doing what you did. Ooh, it's quiet now, ain't it? See, this is the part you didn't read in that book you should have been reading. Wait a minute, preacher. You mean to tell me what I did? God forgiven me? Yes. But how many has ever noticed some of the things you did while you was in sin still come up today? Some of them seeds you planted have a way of resurrecting. <laughs> Come on now, amen. Oh, my, 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 my. David said, thank you, God, for forgiving me. But God said, oh, by the way, amen. the sword will not depart from your door from this day. You will fight for the rest of your life to enter in. Translation, your life has been spared, but the devil is going to try to kill you every day. The grace, though, that we have is to equip us for that battle. Even though we deserve to lose it, grace says you can win it. But we can't go around claiming we got driver's license through the Word of God to do whatever we want to do and live however we want to live. Somebody say amen. Is this all right preaching here? And we live in that. Let me tell you soldiers, if you need to be on a post to do, do not be on a picnic when God needs your services. When he needs you to be active in duty, don't be a wall on God. When God needs you to be on your post to do it. If you need to be a teacher, don't be sitting home watching those shows. When you need to be in the house of God, opening your Bible up, teaching the Word of God. Somebody help me in here. If you're supposed to be in that choir, don't you sit out there 20 foot away and worry about what folk think when you need to be in this choir singing every, Monday, every Sunday morning. You need to be up here. Because the devil has a way of talking you out of your victory while you're sitting out there in that seat not doing what you're supposed to do. You fall into temptation. You fall into contempt. Somebody help me in here. I'm going to preach wrong if you don't help me. My God. I mean, if, if you do what you're supposed to do, you still going to have balance. But at least I'm living in the obedience of the whole thing. That if I'm right and standing with God, He's given me the power to overcome anything that comes my way. It's when I disobey Him and I get out there in no man's land and I start living my own dream and then the battles come I don't have the grace then to help me out so good soldiers this morning Paul told Timothy he said endure hardness as a good soldier endure hardness as a good soldier you do what you're supposed to do you be in the house of God we go a little further Nobody should have to bake you an apple pie to get you to come to church. Help me somebody. I shouldn't have to send you 10 letters to get your attention. And, to, and to keep, you know, keep in every sentence put the word love. And I believe in love. I believe love is the greatest gift. And I believe any other gift that we use, if it ain't used by love, ain't really nothing but a sound and brass and a tinkling sound. Well, somebody say amen. Hey, don't walk out of here and say, preach ain't love. And he's on, he's on a, he's on a roll, man. He, he's, he's, he, he's, uh, he's cutting heads off in there this morning. Let me tell you right now, I, that, ain't, that ain't my plan. But the bottom line is we use love so much, we gamble with that and love. Somebody say amen. And we're living lives we shouldn't be living, knowing we should be soldiers of the throne, knowing that Jesus is about to come back, knowing that he's coming for them who've been faithful, hallelujah, to what he's called them to be. You need to be familiar, not only faithful, you need to be familiar with the people around you. 
Hebrews says, forsake not the assemblies of yourself together as a matter of some have. Matter of fact, as you see today, approach it even doing the more. Translation. Church should be something in your schedule, not something you just work into your schedule. Amen. Fellowship should be something in your life all the time because your connection to liberty and victory is connection with people who love God, who have liberty and victory. Show me a person who's isolated and I'll show you a person just about to fail. But you show me a person who's getting connected with people who's got the victory, even though they don't have the victory, they're going to get it after a while because sooner or later, if you, let me tell you, I know one thing, if you go to a pizza party, sooner or later, you'll get a piece of pizza. I mean, I'm just telling you. I mean, if you go to the if you go to the place, you're going to get something when you, before long, you're going to get it. And church, why is it that we've got this idea if I can just work this thing out, I'll stay at the house. And when I work it out, I'll be back to church. Yeah, heard somebody tell you stuff like that? I don't understand that mentality. I said, man, when are you coming back? Well, I got some things I'm trying to work on. Really? Yep. Yeah. yeah, I ain't forgot about church. Tell everybody down now to love them. What's going on? Well, I'm trying to work some stuff out. You know, just me and God. Now, translation is, you quit. Translation, you quit. You stop fighting. You backslid on the idea that God don't care no more. You mad at somebody or him. And you ain't giving them no more chance. Now you got to get somewhere where there's victory. And you got to get connected with somebody who's got it. That's the power of the Bible.